Yeah. 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 The moment he landed the Farfarer, Renardo had a rare feeling of regret. It's not too late, he thought. He could turn around and sail for Zenobia's island. He frowned. Wait a minute. He didn't want to kill Zenobia, did he? Sure, technically she was the enemy, but they'd been at sword food school together. They'd never been lovers, but somehow they'd been closer. <gasps> She'd told him every secret about herself. Except the biggest one. That she was the Emperor's daughter. No, no. Kill Sylvia. Whispered the stone. Before it's too late. Shush up, stone. You don't know. Dear Zenobia, the director of the Academy has told me how much he is impressed by your academic performance and leadership. Somehow, I doubt this was a session of bootlicking. I have seen plenty of those. That old toad is sincere, and I am proud of you, my daughter. You'll make a fine empress one day. On my end, great news. Professor Calaveras has been studying the Nexus, and he's made a bold observation. That toad is a true genius. You know how that island is unique, constantly changing, new crystalline formations appearing, island fragments merging, splitting, slowly drifting, held together by some invisible threads. Professor Calaveras is convinced those changes are not random, but rather indicative of the living nature of the islands. He's observed that certain changes on the Nexus follow, or sometimes precede, a turbulence on another island. Landslide, quake, flood. The Nexus seems to resonate with those events. Maybe the islands are a hive mind, and the Nexus is the brain. In any case, I'm funding a permanent scientific obser observatory on the Nexus. It will attract the Empire's greatest minds with Professor Calaveras at the helm. I anticipate a great age of enlightenment for the Empire. With love, Father. Hey, I freeze people with that. That's fun. Thank you. came from here, right? So I want to go up. I think there was something sour in the air. Like the earth had ruptured over something that had been fermenting for a very long time. What are you guys doing, you silly gooses? What were these poles exactly? Parking meters from the time of the lost gods? The stone hadn't lied about what it could do for him. With Are we the lost down, gods? That would be weird. A jolt of power flowing into his arm. You're weak. Whispered the stone. The call. Are you afraid of it? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. It chuckled. <laughs> Renardo did not trust rocks that talked in his head. <laughs> he went onwards. Yeah, we don't trust rocks that talk in our heads. Of course there was a puzzle. You couldn't expect the transcendent emperor to bury a god's eye in a leather sack where anyone could pick it up. What the f- There we go. Uh... Yay! We did it! Sky puppers. Uh. Oh, look. 
now. Fracking. Pretty fast now, if I do say so in my smelf. Yo, please don't As kill me. The, core, the stone became hysterical. Yes. Let's do it. He had a sudden vision of plunging his gauntlet into the core and dying in anguish. That wasn't his vision, was it? The stone had sent him its darkest fears, hadn't it? He had a sudden impulse to do exactly that. He raised his right fist and plunged it into the core. There was a rush of light. He thought he could hear the stone screaming. And then he passed out. When Renato came to, the core was gone. But the Ibla stone was no longer black, but glowing with a blue light. <gasps> and it was silent. I can't hear you, he sang out, and you who? He didn't answer. <gasps> ha, he said. He had defeated the demonic gem with the power of his mind. Oh, he felt invincible. It was time to attack the Imperial outpost on the Nexus. Take the battle to the enemy. Oh, damn. But among the huge crystals, there was also an observatory. A wise man would probably ask the scientists exactly what he had first. Hmm. How wise was he? <laughs> the far sailed towards the Nexus. Renata wondered if the core had been created to silence the stone, or even to feed its hunger. <laughs> Honestly, he didn't care. He felt terrific. And he appreciated the quiet inside his head. We're not evil, but we still got the stone. <laughs> Yay! <sighs> the Nexus was infested with ravens. But that didn't Look, I'm glowing enough. blue! With each death. The converted Iblis stone in his gauntlets glowed brighter, and he felt stronger. Uh-oh. Wow. <laughs> he was getting a bit bloodthirsty, wasn't he? Well, he wasn't worried. He was a warrior, as supposed to be. Yep. With the new aerobics trace, am I right? Uh-oh. It's still making me bloodthirsty. That's a little concerning. Yeah! Whoa! So much ore. Uh... Please health. Well, he'd always wanted to do that. In the stone was doing its job perfectly. Renata could feel a little eldritch jolt every time he downed a raven, but then it flowed into the glowing stone the way water flows down a riverbed. It all felt perfectly natural, as if all his life this was what he had been meant to do. 
Nope. Getting too yoked. We're getting too yoked on blood and souls. I don't trust this. I don't trust this! People had laughed at the government workbench placement program. But you could see the benefits everywhere. Uh, oh, I don't have energy on kill equipped anymore? Mistake! Renato tore to the last remaining guards at the outpost like hot coffee through snow. There was a yeah. fire speaker toad here. He called the council speaker. He knew she would be thrilled. And she was. She wanted him to come back to base. They had plans to discuss and a medal to give him. A large golden medal. Great, said Renato. Let's talk about who else I can kill. Then the fire speaker croaked again. Hello, Renato. It said, if you get sick of slaughtering second-rate birds in the Nexus, <gasps> I'm waiting for you in the mountains. Hell yeah! Then, uh, the witch taunting him. With the stone, he'd finally be her match. No, we can finally get our smooch on. Let's get our smooch on. Smooch, 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 smooch. But it didn't matter, did it? He could fight his way out of any trap. He was invincible. <laughs> this was gonna be fun. No, oh, smooches! Priorities right now are all fucked up. No, we're not gonna so go kill her! Where was this ambush? Renato couldn't wait. At Sword Fu School, she'd always studied a little harder, practiced a little longer, complained really a lot less. And then she'd become a sorceress. He'd always known he'd have to take her by surprise, or not at all. <laughs> but this would be a surprise indeed. Yeah. If they didn't want their things broken, they really ought to make them stronger. Smooches for the smooch gods. Yes. Oh, good. And it is not for the nest, said the lead raven. Said the dead lead raven. Mountain paths were infested with ravens. That was swell. Every time he cut one down, the stone glowed a little brighter. In fact, everything glowed a little brighter. Ugh. Look how white the snow was, and how very blue the raven blood was. Oh gosh. Where was she? He wanted to try his new strength against hers. No! Smooches! I'm so angry. I'm so angry. There was an inscription. Praise the sun. Nope. Ow! What the f fuck? No. There we go. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, fine. I'll praise the sun. Okay, fine. Music is getting a little ominous. Renato wondered if his future self had commissioned these poems. Renato felt antsy. He found a source of great power. But instead of joining with the rebels, he was on a fool's errand the Emperor's daughter had sent him on. The rebels were preparing a last-ditch attack against the Imperial fleet, counting on Renato to show up in time. Would he be too late? It only At takes a second to path, smooch. Was Zenobia. I thought you were going to ambush me, he said, a little put out. I owe you better than that. Well, what are we waiting for? That, she said. As a dropship poured a bucket of green liquid on his head. Drowsy gas. You can't stop me with drowsy gas, Zenobia. My power's too strong. Zenobia? Where was she? It was an ambush! He was staring up at the sky. Zenobia looked down at him, frowning. I probably ought to kill you, but that'd be a bit tawdry, wouldn't it? She was tossing the glowing stone from the wall. No! This is pretty. Zenobia! He shouted, and then he fell back into sleep. I was gonna Renato smooch woke you? woke up on the farfarer. His head ached. He drank his favorite hangover remedy, but the brandy did no good. Zenobia had beaten him again. Oh, he really should have listened to the Iblistal in the first place instead of messing around with the core. He had a bad feeling about the upcoming fight. But what kind of hero misses the final battle? Oh shit. We don't have the stone, but she does. Is she gonna turn into a bloodthirsty monster? Or will her dad have it? And he'll be a bloodthirsty monster? Renato was bruised and tired. He wasn't looking forward to killing ravens. It didn't even seem scary. It felt like a chore, like sweeping the practice room at sword food school, which he'd done his best to leave for Zenobia whenever he could. What would she do with the glowing Ibnus stuff? That should terrify him, shouldn't it? But he just felt dumb and stupid as he carved his way toward the probable doom. around the room yelling, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's how we do it. <laughs> it was something he liked to do, but only after he'd killed all the witnesses. I was a little bored. Oh, it's falling. Guys, don't spoil me on stuff. Even if you're just like, speculating. I'm scared that I'm reading spoilers. There had to be something useful in these things, didn't there?
feeling a bit. It was all so unfair. He'd wanted to protect himself, protect the world from the Iblistone's hunger for blood and souls. And all he'd done is get mugged. Next time he owned a supernatural artifact that wanted tribute, he'd serve it champagne and caviar. Looks like he's a lot weaker. You think so? Hoped his hook didn't break. Anasa? More like Ray Nerdo, am I right? Somebody in chat has definitely made that joke by now. Don't even care. <gasps> Look at this! Hey! that mouth. Okay. Zenobia was cleaning blood off her sword and weeping. <gasps> Did she? So hungry. I can't stop killing, she said. But I fed at the core of the Sky Ripper and now he's hungry again. She wept. It was true. The Iblis Stone was black again. A void that seemed to suck all the light out of the sky. Take it from me, Renato. While you still can. Okay. I'll take it. He said. Yes, he thought. This is what it means to be a hero. To save the soul of even his old enemy when it looked like all was lost. He stepped forward to accept the sword from her outstretched hand. She's gonna kill us. She flipped the sword and the blade went into his gut. As the Iblis Stone sucked his soul into its infinite darkness, he could vaguely hear a voice, something like Zenobia's chuckle. Sucker. He should go back to some of the choices he'd faced before. Maybe there were new paths that had opened up. Like those doors he was opening up all over the map that took him to new treasures and around his enemies. And he hadn't learned anything new this time. He'd done the same thing twice, yet expected a no, different No, I didn't. Outcome. Fuck you, game. I didn't do the exact same thing. Damn it, I knew she was going to kill us. God damn it. <laughs> it wasn't a smooch. We didn't get a smooch this time. <laughs> 